Oh, hello. This is Drew with Michigan Adventure Life. And this is John. And we're out here at the Sulak boat ramp on the Pier Marquette River. What are we doing, John? We're fishing for steelhead. We already saw one monster come jumping down here. Yeah, Kara really wanted to get in and chase it. John's got the old double-handed spinning rod. I'm out here with my eight weight. Uh, you know, we're just here to try and get it done. Thanks for joining us. So I'm going to be fly fishing. My rod's rigged up and ready to go, but we have to get John's set up. He's going to be using my nice double-handed spinning rod. So he's got some 40-pound braided line on there. What we're going to want to do is make him a fluorocarbon leader. Uh, we're going to use about 12 pounds because the fish are getting real skittish at this time of year, and they're going to notice your leader coming through. We're going to attach that with a tri-swivel. It's a triple swivel that lets your line go through and then you can put a drop weight off the bottom of that. And then for the drop weight, we've got these solid metal leaders. So to attach them, we just clip it on and then that's gonna allow the weight to come through and not tangle up on stuff as it comes down the line. For weights, we're gonna use anything from these big teardrop weights down to some of the little clip-on sinkers you all are used to probably. That way, you know, it's all gonna depend on what the current's like. We just wanna get down there. And if John's, you know, having a hard time feeling the bottom, we're just gonna have him add a floater, make sure we got some indicators on there. So let's tie it on. So we got a little T. I'm gonna tie the braid to it. Tying braid's hard, you gotta learn special knots. It's not quite the same. But you just make a loop and come through there. And come around the back of that and come through there and then that whole thing's gonna slip when you pull it so you just bring it back around the whole rig and then it's putting the tension on the line itself so you just watch that pull tight see it's a no slip way to tie braid onto a swivel and it's a tri swivel so then we put his leader going that way and his weight comes down off of that okay so what we're using here is 12 pound fluorocarbon fluorocarbon basically disappears in the water and so when you tie it on you're trying to you're trying to hide your movements because we use braided line which is tougher on the front end we're going to use the invisible line the fluorocarbon on the back end just using a regular fisherman's knot to tie this on and then we're gonna measure off about two meters, cut it off, and then figure out what we're gonna terminate it with on tackle. So we got a lot of options. These are dry flies that are designed to float on the top of the water. We're ignoring that for right now. For right now, since we're going after steelhead, we're gonna focus on all these things that look like little eggs. I think John's gonna use this orange grouping right here it's got the nice little trailers. So we're just gonna go ahead and tie that on. So I got about a six foot leader on there. It's just to get your bait away from the thicker line so you don't spook the fish. Get it away from your weight a little bit. We're just tying a standard fisherman's knot. You make a few loops. You go through the circle at the bottom you come back through the circle you just made up top. Get it wet to pull it tight or you'll melt the fluorocarbon. 
and that's that's the John that's the lure John's going to be using. It simulates an egg sack with some trailing eggs on it. And then we're just going to put a weight in between. I'm not going to put the weight on until after we walk down there though, so it's not clanking around. All right, so we're all prepped and ready. We got poles. And we got a dog who's mostly tired out and ready to sit in the car for a while. Hopefully. So uh, we're going to pack up and hit the river. Uh, I'll show you this beautiful river walk. So that's where we're camping. Right across from... Right across from parking for the fisherman's walk. Yeah, I, this isn't where we go down. Hold on, I gotta repack my boots. It's, it's hard to carry your waders down, but it's worse to wear them. <laughs> uh, if you go watch our video on the Pier Marquette River last year, this is actually where we came in. So we're trying to check out some other spots in the Fisherman's Walk this time instead of just, you know, hitting the same stuff over and over again. We're trying to explore, that's adventure. So this is the Pier Marquette River, one of the most famous fly fishing streams in the world. Great poems and art have been done about it, and boy howdy do I love fishing it even though I've never caught a fish in it. But as you can see, if we're getting down, this ain't it. With a lot of debris. With a lot of debris. The harder to access and wade, the more fish there will be. We're gonna have John go up to that point right there and float his line down this away, because this whole bedding in here is downed rocks from the cliff side, and that's that's what the fish want, man. Rocks and gravel. Alright, got some debris. I'm gonna try to keep it away from him and cast it over to that stuff over there. Let's 
And that's how it's been my luck today, you know? Going through... Going through leaders. I guess that's good, though. Finding all the places they're hiding, just not finding any fish. So things are going well, eh, John? Things are going great. Uh, no, I don't. It's deep. I think we're just going to have to cut John's line and retie. That's okay, that's why we bring extra stuff.